Hello, I need to speak to the mayor right now. It's an emergency. Hello, mayor? This is Dr. Emmanuel from the International Disease Center. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there has been a recent rise in certain symptoms. I can confirm now that the problem is lymphatic filariasis. We're still trying to understand how we reached our side of the world, but we'll get back to you later. Good morning, Winnipeg. Edward Austria here. The crew of CTV are live on location at City Hall to broadcast an important announcement from the mayor. Let's take a look. I'm Mayor Trivia and I'm here to announce that there's been an outbreak of filariasis in Winnipeg. Someone has been carrying this from their recent trip and we suspect it to come from a tropical area. We are currently looking for the source of the outbreak and will further update the public once we have more information. Thank you. What we just heard was a live statement coming from the mayor of Winnipeg, officially confirming that there is an outbreak of filariasis in the city. We are now joined by Dr. Emanuel to give us some general information about this infectious disease. She is one of the doctors leading the filariasis research and the prevention team in the International Center for Infectious Diseases. So doctor, what are some important points you think that the public should know? Well, first of all, filariasis is a disease transmitted by mosquitoes infected with filarial worms. These mosquitoes will carry the larvae, which are essentially baby worms, that will grow into adults inside the human body. They'll more specifically live inside the bloodstream. And once a healthy mosquito bites an infected human, the mosquito will pick up both the person's blood and the larvae, and it'll spread to other people. Now, in terms of symptoms, what should the people look out for? Well, terrifyingly, most people don't even show any symptoms. It's not like getting the flu. Mm, this is why we didn't expect this at all. So unless you're part of the small percentage that does have a severe case, you won't notice anything different. If you do have a severe case, you'll be more susceptible to bacterial infections and you'll notice swelling of limbs and the hardening and thickening of skin. These conditions will be more severe in the lower regions of the body. You mentioned earlier that the experts didn't see this coming at all. Can you elaborate? Well, filariasis is in the highest risk for areas with a tropical or subtropical climate. These are places like Africa, South America, and Eurasia. It just simply isn't expected in our continent. Also, people who get infected with it would have to be living in fairly unsanitary conditions for a long time. Like Mayor Trusia said, the person who brought filariasis back would have to have gone on a trip to one of his Paris carriers. Since they didn't have a severe case, they wouldn't know that they had it, because it takes a while for the disease to act severely on your body. Also, we all know how bad mosquitoes get in the summer, but if we combine those two together, it makes this puzzle much harder to solve. Lastly, this may be a question that everybody's dying to know. Hopefully not too much dying though. Am I right, Diane? <laughs> What can the public do to avoid getting infected? Well, they can try to prevent getting mosquito bites. Some simple things would be to wear long sleeve shirts, pants, use mosquito repellent, and also at night, people should consider closing their windows and sleeping under mosquito nets. Well, this certainly has been very informative, and I'm sure that the people of Winnipeg found your explanations useful. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Emanuel. We appreciate all the hard work you're all putting into putting a stop to this uprising disease that's slowly taking over our city. Thank you for having me. The more people we can help, the better the situation gets. Did I live in unsanitary conditions that could possibly transmit diseases? I don't want immigration to question me any further. It can't be that big of a deal anyway. I'll just say no. Nice to meet you, Doctor. It's unfortunate we're meeting under these circumstances. Nice to meet you, too. The situation is terrible. Do you happen to know why the mayor called us in today? All I know is it's about the outbreak. No, I don't. I'm an interrogator with the Canadian intelligence team, so I don't know what she has planned for us. Thank you guys for meeting me on such a short notice. I called this meeting today to talk about the recent outbreak. So, I see you guys have introduced yourselves to each other, so let's just get started. Um, so, Dr. Emanuel has given me a crash course about the disease and she believes that someone has carried it overseas. So, that could be anybody. People fly in and out of here all the time. Do we have any specific areas for lunch? 
They had to come from somewhere with a tropical or subtropical climate and been living in an unsanitary condition for at least five months. So most likely they would have come back to Canada in the past year or so. I see. Any particular symptoms or physical characteristics that can indicate that they were a carrier? Sadly, no. They didn't have a severe case, so they don't have any symptoms at all. So basically, the only thing we're working with is the details of their trip? Yes, and of that area, the only information we have in documents is their destination and the duration of their trip. How do you suppose we find out the rest of the details? Assuming that TSA and immigration would have questioned anyone that declared certain conditions in their trip, they also would have known the problem after testing if they thought it was ever needed. This means we're looking for someone who lied on their declaration form. I think I know what you're getting at. So, I'm looking for someone who is at a tropical or subtropical area for at least five months, came here a year ago, and was living in unsanitary conditions during their trip? That's correct. But just to be clear, you want me to question these people not to bring them into custody, right? But lying on the declaration form, we can give them a fine. Yes, we'll use these tactics to get the answers the fastest way possible. Okay, I'll get this info out to my guys so they can narrow the number of people down. Through our intelligence team, we can find some details about their trips. Maybe I'll get other people to question most of them, but once we bring the number of people down to three, I'll take over the interrogations. I think that's all we have left to discuss. Does anyone have any more questions? I'm fine for now. Me too. Medically, let's decide what to do next after we catch the carrier. For now, me and my team will be preparing facilities to treat the mass patients of the mm. Also, I'd like to request to be behind the scenes of interrogation so I can quarantine the person immediately. That I agree. We'll reach out to you when we get to that point. I take it that this is now an active investigation? Yes, which means I want this as confidential as possible. You have a lot of work to do, so good luck, and please keep me updated. Can you please hurry this up? Please say your full name for the camera. Mark Angela Domingo Manalo. Trisha Malabuyak. Okay, lads, early on. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually know why you're in here, right? Um, is it about that new virus going on? I think I've heard about that in the news. It's actually a disease, and we have reason to believe that you brought it here. Reason to believe? How many people have you said that to? Sir, you can act smug all you want, but this is a very serious problem. Have you seen the news recently? There's a whole lot of fuss about who brought Phalaris over to Winnipeg. I don't know anything. I'm a normal person, and I feel bad for them. Okay. No need to be scared. All we have for you are questions. Okay. So let's start with the first one. Where did you spend your six month long trip away from Canada a year ago? Miami and Congo, obviously. And in good Nigeria. Meru, Kenya. Okay. What did you do there? Where did you stay? I was on vacation. I did a lot of hiking and camping. I spent my time with locals, hitchhiking all the time. Are you done yet? I'm actually an activist. I was there to build homes for homeless people. I'm a photojournalist. I stayed at my friend's house. Oh, you stayed at a friend's house? Yes. You stayed in somewhere unhygienic, um, somewhere that you could get sick from, right? Sure. So it occurred to you that you might have gotten sick. Is this true? Yes. So you would say that these conditions were unsanitary, unhygienic, right? You could say that, I guess. Perhaps where diseases can be easily spread out between people. Sure, I guess. So, did it occur to you that you might have gotten sick when you were there? Yes, that's why I went to the doctor and got myself checked, and they said I was clear. Okay. You're not talking to me anymore. You're talking to my lawyer. Alright. You can deny all your details, but what if I told you that I already knew? You were building these houses in Congo, staying in these tents, in these forests, on these deserts that were so unsanitary that you might have never thought that you would get sick because when you were here you probably took some vaccines, some other preventative measures. But what about something so innocent as a mosquito bite? You don't know what it transmits, right? Over here you get bit with mosquito bites and it's nothing. What if I told you that you brought Phalaris here over to Winnipeg because you lived in these conditions for so long and you didn't even know? Even a little baby, I don't wanna lie. I know when you 
Uh, sounds like you're living in some city. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll do that. I love you, Mark. Yeah. Mika, let's cut. <laughs> Scene. <laughs> I couldn't, I don't know. No, that's a Nigu. Oh, Nigeria. <laughs> Put that in bloopers. You <laughs> <laughs> would be susceptible to this. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't do this anymore. Can you think of collection one more time? This is a lot. You're not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good. Edward, just keep going. Sometimes. We do it again, literally. I'm actually in a com. Uh, stop. All good, let's start again. I'm actually in the I'm gonna put that. Me all swearing. <laughs> Mark singing super bass. <laughs> this one's for the boys. It's, it's awful! <laughs>